right, family, it's Tasha Ma Bear Prepping. So today we are about to get into it. You already know what time it is. Get you a drink of some sort and pull up and let's talk about it. So today I wanted to um, bring you, so obviously there's a lot of shortages happening. Um, we have a lot of things that we know for a fact with conflict that we're going to run into shortages, right? Um, different fuels, different grains, corns, different products that take certain things. Um, as we move forward with sanctions and importing and exporting concerns and issues, we're going to run into just certain things that you just can't find anymore, okay? So I did hurt myself yesterday. Don't worry about it. I'm just a little bit of a klutz when it comes to um, getting in and doing things, okay? Cut myself on a... Was, was organizing some picture frames, some empty picture frames. Um, and then one of them, the glass came out, cut myself, okay? Cut myself pretty good too, but I'm fine. All right, so for those of you that are gonna ask, what happened? Cut your finger off. Um, okay, so we're gonna do a version of, you know, hoard these items, you know, obviously, I'm. it's just a word, you guys. Um, I don't want you to hoard, hoarding is not prepping. Um, but I want to bring home that the importance of these canned food um, items, okay? Now, we always preach canned food, canned food, canned food because it lasts a long time. Very easy to cook. A lot of it's already basically cooked, good to go. And you can just essentially pour it into a can, heat it up. And a lot of stuff, you can literally just open the can and just eat it, okay? Cold, right? Um, so you can still survive off of some of this stuff. So... Um, I'm going to go through some of my favorite canned food options and a lot of these I'm picking because of their properties, because of their fiber, their protein levels, um, you know, that type of thing, right? Uh, okay, so let's just get into it. And then after I give you my 15, I'm going to um, give you some whys or some tips of stuff you can do. Sorry about that. All right, so number one thing is chicken. So obviously canned chicken is super popular in this community, right? You always see people um, with the infamous canned chicken, but it's because it's super easy. It's already cooked. It's, um, you know, it's just super easy, right? You can add a can of that to almost anything and boom, you have a delicious meal. Um, so canned chicken is still a thing. One thing I wanted to mention too, I did mention this in a video a while ago. Um, one thing I um, noticed is, okay, so normally it's just white um, breast meat that you buy in a can, but um, I don't know, maybe a year ago, year and a half ago, I realized that they have a dark meat and uh, white meat option, like a mix. So take a look at your chicken aisle next time you're in it for your canned chicken and and, the, and maybe you get you some dark meat as well, okay? The next thing I have is tuna. You know, a lot of people don't like tuna, right? It's a very acquired taste, but those that do like it really, really like it. Some people have to have, you know, the extra stuff in it, but then some people um, don't. But I'm telling you, some tuna or some canned chicken with a little bit of mustard, some um, cut up pickled egg in it, salt and pepper, that's delicious, okay? Um, if you've gone further and you've prepped, you know, mayo packets and relish packets and things like that, or pickled, you know, made, you know, canned pickles, boom, you got a good meal, okay? So canned chicken, canned tuna. My third thing is yams. Yams are super, super packed with delicious and nutritious stuff. And so they're very, and they're very, very hearty. They're very like filling. Um, so yams and yams, I'm actually low on yams myself in my preps. After I was doing this video, I was like, oh man, we got to get, I got to get more yams. I got to get my yam game up. Okay. So yams. Next one, another one acquired taste. This is for you, Jason. Spam. So Again, people either love it or hate it. You can make it a thousand ways. If you do like it, it, it holds well uh, for a very, very long time. It has a very high amount of sodium, however. Um, but if you're in a situation where you're cooking over a fire or you don't have any salt or you're on the go, um, you know, you're you're on the go, meaning you're in a bag, you're outside, you're camping, you're, you're hiking, you're walking, whatever, migrating. They have um, single spam packets you can buy, but can spam last forever. We actually recently tried... Um, one that was flavored bacon and I was a little like uh I don't know bacon flavored spam I'm not sure you guys but it smelled like bacon when it was cooking and it's pretty good so boom spam uh next thing I have is broth bone broth any kind of bone broth um super important it very very good for cooking you can use that as a substitute for water um you know, it's great for sickness and people that are sick. It's great to add to anything, soup, stew, whatever. It's a very good base. 
bone broth, super important, must get that. And you can get that in a can option. Next thing is coconut milk. This gives you a semi-dairy um, uh, way to keep some kind of dairy on the um, shelf. Obviously, there's several other ways to keep dairy on the shelf. <coughs> Excuse me. But coconut milk, we keep that. We keep that for different um, meals. Okay. St again, stews, recipes, baking, um, just drinking coconut milk. Very, very good. You can get it in a can option. And again, um, is, is packed full of great stuff for you. Uh, next thing is vegetable soup. So you could stick to soups, um, but try to stick to, when I say my top, I'm talking about very, very chunky, um, packed full of vegetables. I typically like the ones that have a protein in it. So they're going to have be full of vegetables and a protein. And then um, again, this is a product that tends to have some high sodium content, depending on which ones you get. So just get you one on the shelf that's low sodium, um, you know, and is not the top, you know, brand or top shelf as far as the, you know, the sodium content. Okay. So there's a lot of options out that you can get and healthier options. Next thing I have is beets. I specifically keep beets in a can. This is great for heart health. This is great for, um, high blood pressure, that type of thing. You have to be careful with eating beets every single day. As we learned, I had started having hubby eat beets quite a bit. He, well, he actually was not eating beets. He was actually, um, making drinks, beet drinks. Um, but that was also is a, something that can, um, long-term can cause kidney stones. Okay. So just understand what you're doing. But to me, great to have on our shelf as an option, um, from time to time to be able to make either drinks or add it to some sort of soup, um, or just to eat in general. Okay. So beets, um, for me, I think I don't like beets, but for me, knowing hubby, I think of it um, because they're good for your heart health, overall heart health. Okay, so next thing I have is beans, any kind of beans, but specifically black beans, kidney beans, navy beans, kidney and black, probably the best out of those two. There's other stuff you can get in cans, legumes. There's different things that you can get that are that are chock full of fiber and very important things, um, but just think beans in a can. You can get some beans too that have um, added protein, added meat to it, um, obviously, um, but, um, get that in, get that in a can form. Absolutely. Beans, beans, beans. We talk about beans, like beans and rice all the time. Um, but beans are such an easy option to get in the can. Yes, you can get raw beans, but it takes so long. You know, you have to soak those. You have to prep them right to make them, to be able to cook them. They still take a while to cook, to get them really, really how you want them. Um, but don't sleep on a good, just basic can of beans. They're already done. The work's done for you. It's easy. You open it up. Again, you can eat it cold. And so the point is when you're talking about grid down or later, you know, you might not be in a situation where you're able to get, um, or have beans. Maybe you didn't prep them or, or something happens. They got, they got compromised, whatever. So beans, one of my favorite things to get that is in a can. Next thing is chilies. Okay. Um, yeah, I have that on here. Okay, so chilies. Again, love it. Beans, meat, hearty. Again, be careful of the high sodium in some of them, but great options, okay? Next one is spinach. If we talk about vegetables, um, I'm going to talk about a few vegetables here now kind of in a row, but um, spinach is a huge one. Um, very easy. It's, it's you know, you can make it a lot of different ways or get it a lot of different ways, but a uh, canned option you can get. Next thing I have is corn. Absolutely, absolutely have to get corn. If you eat corn in your family, you need to get that in a canned option and get that on your shelves now before we run into, remember, just even a year, year and a half ago, we ran, went through a corn shortage, okay? We also went through an aluminum can shortage. <laughs> So think about the things that are going on in the world right now and understand that shortages are here, but some of those other quirky shortages that had to do with overseas and import and exporting, we're going to be dealing with those again because we're going to run into a problem where those companies can't get those things and therefore they can't get the product to us. Next thing is stews. So, you know, beef stews, that type of stuff. Again, kind of like chilies, hearty beef stews that have lots of vegetables, have potatoes, have meat. 
all of that into an easy can. That stuff's super easy to just heat up and then serve over rice, you guys. Um, I can't I can't state enough how easy that type of meal is and how filling it is. Super filling the minute you put it over rice as well. It was already filling, but you can make um, you know, a large family can stretch over a large family if you're pouring that over rice as well. Okay. So just something to think about. Next thing I have is tomatoes. Okay, so you have to be careful of uh, acidic type items, but tomatoes um, paste form, I like tomato soup form, and I like dice form. I like all three because all three are amazing to add to a soup or, a soup or stew when you're cooking. Now, you guys, a lot of this stuff is canned food is easy because we talk about it because grid down, grid down, grid down, right? No power, no power. How do you continue to cook? You need easy things that, that just you can pop open and open and make it easy. And a lot of these canned options for tomatoes, um, you know, tomato paste, even tomato soup, adding that as a base for some, some pasta and some meat and some vegetables that you just threw in a pan or a little soup that you just threw together, that's amazing, okay, to have those different options, okay? So I like those in different um, ways. And then the last one I have is carrots, okay? So again, another very, very good vegetable. Again, you can get this in a multiple ways, but getting this in a can option so that you have it, okay? So now let's talk about the whys again a little bit. So we have shortages in general. We have, um, we're have we going to be going through a grain shortage. If you haven't been watching, um, been researching this for a while, but there's several channels too that are reporting on this. If you watch other preparedness type channels, okay, we're going to have an issue with grain and grain is going to affect a lot of things, right? That's bread, that's that's wheat, that's, that's flour, right? From making bread, Um Get your yeast products now so that if you get to a point where you're making bread yourself, get your bougie bread making items now, right? That all the things that you want to get, your dough hooks, you know, your bread pans, your um, the, the, the cute pans you want for when you're, you know, letting it rise or shaping, right? Get all your bread stuff now, okay? Get stocked up on your flowers now. Get stocked up on wheat berries and berries for, let's say, a grinder, right? Um, corn, whole corn, right? feed corn. Like, get, get your grains now, okay? Again, get your big bags of rice. Get your big bags of beans. But just be thinking across the board, um, getting those items, okay? But just in 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 the in the thought process that I want us to just be thinking about is think about shortages but how it's going to get worse and there's going to be very specific things that you can't get and getting ahead of that now okay um, and then of course how the conflict the current conflict in Russia and Ukraine how that's going to affect us okay um, and then just think about this this is all items this we're talking about canned items but remember this is stuff that you can grow so start growing this stuff um, can this stuff all of this stuff you can can pressure can or water bathe and get it on your shelf that way when we talk about can too, you know, there's some stuff that you don't want to get in cans, which I just said was like acidic type stuff. So like your, your heavily citrus type stuff, right? Your mandarin oranges, your peaches, your, um, oranges, your, um, what else? Um, pineapple, <coughs> your pineapple 50 different ways in a can, right? Your, your rings, your dices. I love pineapple and stuff, okay? But it would behoove you to can that stuff, okay? Because over time, if you keep that stuff for a long time, that acidic will start breaking down your cans, okay? Um, and then your cans, those cans will be compromised, okay? Now, if you have them in your preps or you have them in your kitchen and you're eating that stuff on a regular basis and you have a really good rotation going with that and you use them often, then fine, great. But what I'm telling you is don't buy cases and cases of acidic type foods, pineapple chunks, um, and you have 10 cases of them and then you have them in your basement and you're just going to leave them there and you're like, hey, those are for a rainy day. Those are for 20 years from now. No, baby, those are going to eat the cans. And so it's not going to be a good look, but you could buy that stuff fresh and then can it. Okay. Water bathe it, can it, get that stuff good to go and um, on your shelf that way um, so that you're, you're, um, you're okay. Right. A lot of people um, would say, uh, <clears throat> you know, metal, you know, you're putting, you're canning and you're putting a metal top on it and all that stuff. Uh, but just remember those lids are a little bit different. They have another little ad adhesive. If you look at them, they have another little adhesive on the bottom of them. And it's totally different. The majority of a product is in a glass jar. Okay. That has been processed. Okay. So 
I think that that's everything. Those are my 15 canned foods to get now, to hoard now. Um, basically, just look at your preps, see what you have right now for those areas, okay, of canned items. Obviously, if they're food that you guys eat, if you guys don't eat them, don't get them. Don't get flats and flats of spam, you guys, and your family can't stand spam. That's ridiculous. Like, do not spend your money on stuff that you're not going to eat, okay? Um, but get these items. Like I just mentioned, I need to get my yams game up. I'm pretty good with the rest of this. Um, we could probably get some more spinach because hubby loves spinach. So spinach in our house doesn't last. We get fresh spinach. I'm going to grow spinach, all this good stuff. But um, we do keep... Um, and frozen he goes to the frozen stuff too um but i like having canned because it's another option especially for off grid okay and when we when we get to a point where we don't have fresh stuff okay so i will see you guys tomorrow tomorrow is where i start my series I, it is going to be kind of weird because it's going to be kind of broken up um because of sunday i won't have a video sunday um but tomorrow what's tomorrow tomorrow's friday yeah so i'll have a video friday part one Saturday part two and Monday will be part three um, and basically that's going to be our CBRN um, defense videos um, how to prepare how to live through that all that good stuff okay um, so that will be tomorrow and then of course I'll have my tour video on the other channel on Mama Bear Homestead channel um, tomorrow as well so I have lots to do today you guys see I have my paint shirt on I have a lot of painting to do, but I also have seeds I'm starting today, um, and I'm getting my sister involved too. She's going to do her own seeds, and so we're getting uh, excited and we're getting things going. So I'll see you guys tomorrow on the next video. Take care. Blessings from my bear cave to yours. Bye.